Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back to the fourth and final lecture, chapter 10, where I'm going to discuss the problems at the end of the chapter. Okay, I have lots of fun problems here. So the first seven problems are all considered, are all concerned with Newton's equations of motion in one dimension under the action of a central force field. So phase plane analysis ought to come to mind. V of S is a potential energy function. So the first three problems I've discussed a little bit already. Uh, I want you to show that level curves in the, in the phase plane cross the s-axis, they go from v positive to, to v negative, at the turning points in a perp perpendicular fashion. So we know we have a condition when e equals v, when they cross, you just need to uh, compute the appropriate derivative to check that. All right, if you add a constant to the potential function, does it change the phase portrait? Uh, you need to think a little bit about this. Suppose in problem three, suppose SV equals S naught zero is an equilibrium point of Newton's equation. Is it a solution of Newton's equation? Now I, I discussed this, what I thought was carefully a couple of lectures ago. It's a little bit of a subtle point, so I want you to revisit it. Okay, in the next few, next four questions, I give you a sketch of potential energy curve, and I want you, for that curve, to determine the number of equilibria and their stability type, critical points, local minima, local maxima, and then sketch the phase portrait. This is, this is a, for problem four, the phase portrait is pretty interesting. Problem five, that, Okay, same thing, and sketch the phase portrait. Problem six and seven, okay, that's interesting. Phase portrait, you're going to get there. That's uh, simple, but sometimes the simplest ones are kind of tricky because you don't expect them to be so simple. All right, the next problem, eight, I give you the angular momentum of a particle about a point, and I want you to find the torque at a particular time. Angular momentum as a function of time is what I give you here. Problem nine, you're given a particle of some mass two moves in a time-dependent force field and then at time zero these are the initial positions and velocities. It's moving three dimensions and then I want you to compare for any time, the velocity, position, torque about the origin, and angular momentum about the origin. All right, now, problem 10 and 11 are setting you up for the next chapter. I define what is meant by a central force, and I want you to show that the angular momentum about the origin is conserved for a particle of constant mass m moving under the influence of a central force. Okay? And then, I mean, that's a cross-product thing. 11, this is in very, this is an interesting problem because we're moving in three dimensions. F is a force in three dimensions, but if it's a central force, I want you to show that if a particle moves under the action of the central force, then its path must always lie in a plane. Interesting. I give you a hint for doing that, but we're going to exploit that quite a bit in the next and final chapter. Kepler, Galileo, and Newton all come together in our discussion of motion in a central force field. So, see you next time. Bye.